Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to episode six of ERT. I am Derek, and I am joined with Braylon. This is my daughter. Say hello. Hi. As you can see, she's a little shy. So um, she wanted to come on the show today because she wants to talk about Great Wolf Lodge. Uh, it's one of her favorite places. We've been there a few times. Um, for those who don't know, Great Wolf Lodge is a uh, resort. It's an indoor water park. Um, they have a few other activities as well. So um, why don't you tell us what you like about Great Wolf Lodge? So Great Wolf Lodge, I don't know if they still have like, the same things, but... Like, one of my favorites is, like, the lily pads that are there. You like the lily pads? Dad, you know I do. <laughs> yes, I know that you like. That when we went to um, Castaway Bay at Cedar Point, you spent almost the entire time going across the lily pads at that park. <laughs> yeah, especially when I was, like, walking across it and then, like, I hold on when there's, like, nothing for my feet to hold on to. What else do you like about Great Wolf Lodge? Well... It is cool. Sometimes they like, sometimes if you're like in the right moment, like when you're there, sometimes there's like these shows like before bed. Like, okay, so they do a show at nighttime, like kind of like a, they do like what is like a story, uh, storytell reading, or they do like that dance party, the pajama dance party. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. You like that? Mm hmm. Okay, what else did you like about Great Wolf Lodge? Like that, like, like big, I don't know what to say, but like the big sing, like the climbing sing, and like in the water sing. I don't. Know. Okay, so you like the, like the playground, like the giant play area where like they have the big bucket of water and the yeah. other stuff. Yeah, I'm a little bigger now, so I'm big enough to like stand under there. Okay. Well, that's exciting. So, okay, tell me one more thing that you like about Great Wolf Lodge. Well, I also like the rooms. You like the rooms. What do you like about the rooms? Well, I think their beds are very comfy. You think their beds are very comfy. Yes. Okay. So, okay, I promise this isn't a Great Wolf Lodge advertisement. My daughter specifically asked that she wanted to talk about Great Wolf Lodge in this video. So I gave her a couple minutes to talk about it. So thank you for coming on the show today, Braylon. And... um. Yeah, so next time, maybe the next time we go to Great Wolf Lodge, you can uh, you can talk more about it. Okay, so yeah, I got Kara with me now. So we didn't get through all of the questions that you sent us uh, last week. So more, because I kind of posted that a little bit too late. So a lot of your questions came after we recorded that video. So let's just jump right into it and get to the questions. Okay. So, um... Let's see here. So I like this question. This one comes from Park Visions, and it's, What coaster did you go in expecting to be good, but after riding was underwhelmed, let down? Oh, I have to think about this for a minute. <laughs> um, this one is, is more of like a love or hate, but I remember the first time that I rode Apollo's Chariot. This was back in 2013. I was really expecting to love it, and I actually I just thought it was very boring. But now that I ride it, I enjoy it more. But I was definitely let down the first time. Um, I hate to say it, but also you can kind of say I was sort of let down with Steel Curtain. Okay. Um, Why? I think it's, I mean, I think it's an okay coaster. But I guess I was expecting some of the airtime moments to be a little bit better. And the restraints really restrict you. So you don't really experience the airtime that I was hoping for. But, and it has like that weird vibration thing. But it does have like a weird rattle i'm nitpicking but yeah i if it, it didn't exceed my expectations steel curtain is a front row yeah only ride you have to ride it in the front row um people are probably gonna hate me for saying this but i the first co coaster that comes to mind is jersey devil coaster okay i i don't know it was the first time we'd ever ridden a single rail and i it's rmc so i had pretty high expectations um and it just wasn't it didn't wow me like it has those awkward restraints the awkward seat style like the way you like straddle in the car yeah and the last time we wrote it which was this past summer it was painful yeah it was kind of rough like it was like every rivet in the track you could feel it which actually um 
that will be my next video. I have my winners and losers and surprise. There's a certain roller coaster that shows up in that video. Ooh, and spoiler. it might be the one that we just mentioned. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's great. Let's see. So, um, let's see here. Parks. Uh, um, the next question is from Utah Coaster Enthusiast. And it's parks on your bucket list. So, I think one of the ones that comes right to mind is Lagoon. Okay. Um. You know, it's kind of weird because we've been to a lot of the major parks in the United States. There's some that I'd like to revisit, but uh, I guess you could say the ones that are on my bucket list. Okay. No, you said which one is on your bucket list. Lagoon, that's your bucket list. Well, that's, that's just one. Your... But, like, I have Canada's Wonderland, Six Flags Over Texas, um, You're just gonna Universal name Studios, Hollywood. We haven't done that one. And then, I mean, if we go overseas, I would love to go to, like, Alton Towers, Energylandia, okay. um, Fantasia Land. Um, but you I said Energylandia. You, you didn't mention the one... Europa Park. The other singular park that's in the United States that that's a major park that we have missed. What? That would be at the top of our bucket list. Knott's what? Berry Farm. Oh, yeah. I kind of keep forgetting about that park. I don't know why. But we missed it when we went to California in 2013. Kind of regret that. I blame that on you. That's probably my fault. I was looking at ways. I was like, let's go after like four o'clock or something in one day. And we opted to go back to the beach or something Arr. silly like that. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Do you have any bucket? Is that it? Knott's Berry Farm? Well, see, Knott's Berry Farm was the first park that came to my mind. And then I was waiting for you to list it. And you went down through the list and didn't hit it. No, I, I honestly, I think a lot of mine are probably like overseas parks. I was going to say my my bucket list parks would be the Disney parks that are overseas. Okay. Like Japan. Yes. Disney Sea. Um, obviously the one in France. Shanghai, and... though you might be shanghai if you go to Shanghai Disneyland. Because <laughs> didn't they like, isn't it at the park where they like literally like locked everybody in the park? Uh, there's been Because some of like some particular breakout of certain things. sickness. Yeah, I don't so, know. Yeah, that I don't one know. might not be quite at the top of my bucket list but, but yeah people were stuck in that park for a while it was kind of chaotic but i would love to visit the overseas yes. disney parks i think that would be a lot of fun i think it'd be interesting yeah um let's see here i'm, I'm kind of jumping all around here so um because some of these are questions we answered and some of them are not so this question is from specialist archive of animal Six four six five, I think, or is it? It looks like a T. Animat. <laughs> it's like a Peloton sp- instructor yeah, trying knows. to read off the name. But it says, "Do you think El Toro will get RMC'd or scrapped and torn down, or do you think they will keep the bowl?" Um, unfortunately, it's not going to get scrapped. And I, I, when I say, let me correct that. When I, I say, say unfortunately, say it's unfortunate. not unfortunate to get <laughs> scrapped. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get any major overhaul. From what I hear, it sounds like they're doing the work to get the ride back up and um, back up and running. But I don't know if they're actually going to truly fix the problem of this ride, like give it the complete overhaul that it needs. Which, ironically, this is another coaster that I talk in my winners and losers <laughs> video, which is coming up soon. But um, do I think it'll be RMC? Probably not. I mean, technically, RMC is the one who actually built this roller coaster. It's designed by uh, by Intimate Amusement Rides, but Rocky Mountain Construction was the construction crew that came in and built the ride, as, as far as I'm aware. But, I don't know. you have any thoughts on it? I don't know. I, I just wish they would fix it and make it good again. I was going to say, you never got to ride it when it was butter smooth. When this coaster, let's see, I rode it in 2007 and I think 2009 or was it 2008, 2009? Something like that. It was back pretty much around the time this coaster opened and it was like butter smooth. It was so amazing. I didn't ride it. The first year I rode it was what, 2020? Was that the first year I rode it? 2019. 2019. Yep. It was good. It was still good. Yeah, it was still good. It just... It's definitely gone downhill since then. Yeah. But um, so our next question that we have here, and I was trying to see if I could figure out because it's kind of a long question. This is from King Dakar Gabe 7902. And he says, with all the hydraulic launch coaster shenanigans with dragster retiring and accelerator being closed for a long time, 
How long do you think Ka will last as a hydraulic launch coaster? Possible renovations in the new future, or will Ka live the rest of its days as is? Um, I don't know if it's just going to be specifically Ka, King to Ka. I don't see any reason why Six Flags would... They're not going to tear down the ride unless their hands are forced to do that. So I don't see that's happening. I mean, they still hold a record as the tallest roller coaster in the world. It's still the fastest roller coaster in the United States. Um, that new coaster, it's like Falcon's Flight that's supposed to be going to like Saudi Arabia. I can't remember what Six Flags Park. They're breaking ground. But if I recall what they said, they're calling it like the fastest and longest roller coaster now. So I don't even know if they're claiming it to be the tallest roller coaster anymore. So King Ka might still hold that record. So, I mean, everybody keeps kind of forgetting like King Ka is 456 feet tall. That's like half the size of the Empire State Building. Um, there's no other roller coaster other than Top Thrill Dragster, which is 420 feet that comes close to this height. Like, the next one would be like, well, I guess there was like Red Force is like 350 or something like that. But even still, like this has like a good 100, almost 100 feet on that ride, which is pretty crazy in height. So yeah, I don't see them tearing it down. Putting like an LSM launch or something like that, I don't see them doing it unless again, their hand is forced. We really have no idea what's happening with Top Thrill Dragster. So until we actually see what they end up doing to the ride and how this new version works out. Then it'll be easier for us to judge to see if, like, if it's, like, some amazing, like, it blows everybody's minds away. Then, yeah, Six Flags might be like, yeah, let's do that to King Nakao as well. But we have no idea. I mean, I just feel like, look at what they've done with El Toro. They've kind of, like, scraped done by the bare minimum. with the bare minimum. So yeah. why would they put more effort into King Nakao? Yeah, especially this is, King Nakao is a super expensive attraction like i don't know the price tag off the bat but i'm pretty sure top throw dragster was a 25 million dollar attraction in 2003 just to give you an idea like when you look at it it doesn't seem that crazy but like 25 million dollars if that was built today that's probably going to be like a 40 million 50 million dollar project is what that was so yeah with so king Nakai would be pretty much around the same thing so yeah i agree i don't think much will ever happen to it but I, I think it all depends on what the end result of Top Thrill Dragster is. If that trues, turns out to be like a really good uh, transformation of a hydraulic launch coaster, then I could see other parks being like, yeah, ours is problematic. Let's go over to this. But until we see that, I I wouldn't know. Um, let's see here. I might have one or two other questions. I'm sorry. Like I said, a lot of these are kind of like bounced around. So, um, Okay. Um, Doug Ronald 561 asks, when they reopen Montezuma's Revenge, what do you expect with a renovation? So do you know what Montezuma's Revenge is? It's at Knott's Berry Farm, correct? Yes. It's a Schwarzkopf shuttle loop. Yes. Somebody posted about this on Instagram the other day. Was, did you post about it on Instagram the other day? Um, I mean, or might I, have just been somebody else. I talked about this roller coaster in, um my video that I just dropped, I guess. Okay, if today is the day after Christmas, which is what I'm planning on releasing this video, this would have been my Thursday video. I believe I mentioned it. I was talking about like my 2023 coaster wish list in Montezuma's Revenge, which is called, I think it's called like the Forbidden Fortress. Oh, okay. The, that's where, okay. Yes, yeah. that's where I remember. So okay. what they're yes. doing, so you know what a shuttle, their shuttle loop is, yes. right? It's a very simple ride that you'd shoot down, you do a loop, you go up a spike and then you go back through the whole thing and you go up another spike and it's done. Um, they're replacing the flywheel mechanism with an LSM launch um, and they're adding other theming aspects to it. So... I cannot think of it, but there's a roller coaster over in Europe where they have a Schwarzkopf shuttle loop. And I think they put the whole thing or most of the entire roller coaster indoors. Like they just built like a giant, okay. like a giant thin warehouse around this thing. It's just like this long like cylinder that goes through with a lot of like effects and stuff. I don't think they're doing that with Montezuma's Revenge, but they might be adding some of it in like a building. Like a tunnel? Yeah, they might be. I'm not 100% sure. Um... The other thing is that they mentioned is this ride is going to have different variations. Like you, when you the ride starts, you don't know if it's going to launch you backwards first or launch you forwards. That would be interesting. So you might shoot up that spike first and then shoot into the, the launch, which I mean, I assume the rest of the ride would be the same. So there's kind of like that little change. Um, 
as I said, I have it on my wish list. I think it's going to be fun. I'm kind of intrigued with this idea, and we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I think it, uh, I think that's probably the reason why we have the other Schwarzkopf shuttle loop. I think it's supposed to be going to, is it the Niagara Amusement Park? Um, yeah, you, you probably don't know. <laughs> um, they, uh, they, I think that's one that might be sitting around because I think there's rumors that I could get the LSM launch treatment as well. So we'll see. But I'm very intrigued. Uh, I, I'm very interested to see what this the new Montezuma's Revenge will look like. Let's see here. Um, that might be it for the questions. Let's see here. I just want to double check. Um, yeah, that pretty much looks like the questions that we have. Um, so yeah, Christmas is over. We have the new year coming on. Um, we're not, not to say that we aren't going to release our, we're not one of those people that are like, Hey, check out our 2022 three plans that we're going to do because uh, a lot of times we sort of just, sometimes we just kind of go by the seat of our pants. We're or, very spontaneous. Uh, but as of right now, I do, um, one of my big plans is I think we're going to head out West. So we're going to hit up some California parks. So, um, which will be fun to finally get back out there. They like Six Flags Magic Mountain. Give that its, um, its redo, <laughs> I guess is what we want to call it. It's, uh, um, Yeah. Give it another chance. Hopefully it's not 120 degrees on the day that we go. Yes. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see. And that Knott's Berry Farm, uh, we might hit up a couple more uh, more parks out that way as well. Um, other than that, everything is sort of in the air. I was really kind of planning on going down to Texas, but I'm kind of waiting on if I feel confident that that circuit breaker is going to open. If I see the construction all of a sudden starts going like full steam ahead, then I might make plans for that. But um, that might get pushed off to 2024, like early 2024. Obviously, there's Airy Force One I'd like to get down to. We are, I think we're going to go down to Dollywood. And Airy Force One is about four hours away. So I guess we will see what happens. But... Um, we're obviously going to go to Bush Gardens to check out Dark Coaster. Yeah, we'll make it down there. Um, and also, I'm throwing around the idea of going up to Canada's Wonderland because it's like it's like five to six hours away. We just have to get our passports. That's really our big thing. But it's, I mean, it's pretty much, it could be a weekend trip for us. It's something. I mean, we have, a, we all have the Cedar Fair passes, so we can head up there. Um but yeah, I don't know. Nothing like super major. I mean, probably in a couple of years, I would really like to head over to Europe and to what parks. I don't know, but that'll probably be something in the in the works at some point. It'll be pretty fun. Once our kids are a little bit older. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, well, thank you. I hope you all had a great holiday. Obviously, we have the new year right around the corner. Um, we might be taking a break the next week because we'll be traveling and whatnot. So I don't know if we'll have another episode for like a couple weeks, but... Um, we hope you had a great 2022 and join us for 2023.